make sure I have everything. Um, so I don't think, for me, I don't really, the only time I didn't was they, I didn't realize that the uh, power converter, was, the EOC didn't give me the right one. And I had a, but thankfully I was flying through Charles de Gaulle and just bought one at the airport. So they always keep that stuff on my carry-on. Right. Um, but, yeah, and I, the most valuable thing, I don't, oftentimes it's my my iPod. <laughs> so I can, you know, I just listen to music because I, you know, because in your international setting, you usually have a TV, but, you know, it's often things you're not going to want to watch at the end of the night, so I just put on some music and um, attach it to my laptop if I want to amplify it instead of listen to through the headphones. But Right. That's but the big and the other big one is actually for long flights, noise canceling headphones, they are the best investment there is because you can actually sleep on a plane. It really helps sleep on the plane for me anyway. Um so I think that was one of the other big things that made a big difference. Okay. That's and, an excellent suggestion. And you're taking clothes to work out and a lot of people just pack their field stuff and then they realize, oh, I can't work out. So That's an, also an excellent suggestion. Yeah, there's another really one thing that sticks out substantially. Okay. Anymore. No, those are all those are all <clears throat> those are all awesome things. The things I always forget are sunblock. It just I just forget it. I don't know why. I never successfully gone anywhere without remembering to bring it. <laughs> I think the only reason I don't forget it is because they give us some in our EOC. A mm-hmm. lot of times they give us our um, the some of the mosquito prevalent has SPS in it too. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, they're doubling up on everything these days. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, the last question on here, and it's not the last because we'll, there's actually several questions, but um, if you were to provide advice to an officer and say a junior officer who hasn't gone, ever gone on an deployment before, what, you know, either an international or a domestic, what advice would you give them? And, I mean, you have volunteered for yours. Do you have any regrets about going? And, and what are your overall impressions? What advice would you give a junior officer? Uh, that's a you know, that's a tough question. You know, I, I wouldn't, you know, I think part of it is just, you know, if you have the time, you know, take as much time as you're given because a lot of these appointments are, you know, for CDC, they can happen pretty quick. Um, if you, but take as much time as you can to just prepare yourself, you know, make sure you have everything you need and make sure you're mentally ready and have all your, you know, like before, like bills ready, you know, to go. Because the one thing you want to be very careful about is logging into bank accounts and when you're overseas and, you know, make sure you have the proper, you know, take, you know, they always recommend take at least $200 in cash and just to make sure you're covered, you know, especially we, you know, our cards are protect, you know, government cards. So they're pretty, you know, they're fine to use. You know, we're not, we're not liable if something ha- get hacked to on deployments. I think it's just a lot of those little things just to make sure you're good to go and, you know, that you're ready for it too because you don't want to fly 18 hours because a lot of times it's, you know, for Africa, it usually ends up being flying to Amsterdam or Paris and then flying to Nairobi or Lagos or whatever. And so I think, you know, the big thing is being ready before you even get to the airport because you don't, you want to be able to rest in the plane. You don't want to be anxious about what you're getting yourself into. Well, that should scare them away. (laughs) No, that's excellent advice. But as a part, I guess if you were to to tell them one thing, um, would I guess what I'm asking is, would you recommend that, that, that everyone do it? That everyone should deploy? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, the only real way you learn, the only way you really, like, from my perspective, and one of my good friends who I work with closely, 
you know, he and I both say the only way you really understand, you know, your job is, especially for what he and I do, the only way you really get it is if you're actually out there doing it. You know, you'll have people, hold on a second. Sorry, I got to, I think this is the Home Depot. Okay. Yes, fine. Right. Oh, use the call box. Look up my last name, Christensen, in the call box, and then I'll let you. I'll buzz you in at the gate. Use the call box. Look up my last name, Christensen, and I will and dial it, and I will buzz you in. Yes, at the gate. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'm teleworking today, so. I- can, uh, we're allowed a couple, like one or two days a week, so I'm taking advantage of it today because I have a dishwasher coming. Oh, good for you. All right, well, this is the last question, so I'll let you get to your person. Well, you were just about to finish an awesome quote saying that uh, you only really learn uh, your I, job. Yeah, I and... think to, yeah, mm-hmm. to, truly, to truly learn your skills, you know, if you're, well, and a lot of times people deploy for their non- work setting, like a lot of times it's logistics mm-hmm. or whatever else, but, you know, for the work that we do and I do in infection control, you know, the only way to really learn it is to get out in the field. And so, you know, whether it's domestic or international, you know, if you're going to deploy for your, you know, for your actual skill set, that's the only way to really learn it. You know, you learn so much being out in the field and actually doing it. And, so I mean, that's the one big thing that, you know, a lot of us in my office have talked about, like, you can write all the guidance you want, you can do whatever, but if you don't actually try it and do it or, you know, see what it's being done in the field, it just it doesn't have the same value. Right. And, and, then, that's the and then the other thing is just, just getting out in the field to work with other people and collaborate and, you know, help people. I think that was the big thing for me is always, you know, when you're out in the field, you're going to a situation where people are, you know, especially in emergency response, they're having their some dark days and you're you're there to help them. And every time I've been there, they've always been very appreciative and, you know, that means a lot too. You're there to help and, you know, for, you know, how, for public health, that's what you want. Exactly. I think it's two. One is like your own personal skill building, but the other is just, you know, you make the biggest difference out in the field than you do sitting behind a desk. Ooh, that's a good at quote. Least, at, least, uh, at least making that connection. Well, I think we've got some really good stuff here. <clears throat> I think we got enough for two interviews. <laughs> I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And uh, uh, is there any other? I mean, if you think of something tonight, like you know, this is this is something, you know, that uh, I just thought about, and you should include it just to kind of summarize some other things or that. But um, I'm gonna go and type all this. Get this I'm gonna try and get this all just. Uh, voice to text transcribed and then fix the words like Kenya that it's not going to pick up on correctly. Um, right. And then um, what I'd like to do is just do an initial. I'll see how much space it actually is going to be, and then I'll I'll try and get it down to that, and then I'll just kind of cut out all the things that aren't very ex- interesting or exotic, and then give that to you to look at and give you a chance to make corrections or. You know, make your your if you want to make your answer more eloquent or or whatever you'd like to do to it. That way, you you've got a, a chance to review it before it, anything happens to it. So, yeah, no, I'm ho- I'm hoping to do that. I, I need to. I've got a rough deadline of the fifteenth, which is next Wednesday. I'm planning on having this all done uh, this weekend. Do you have an opportunity Monday or Tuesday just to look it over? I know it's a very tight timeline. Um, 
Monday, yes. I'm actually on annual leave, but I'll be home. Uh, okay. I'm actually going to Tampa this weekend. But uh, And then, I'm, do you need a picture for anything? Like, what's the go with it? Or? Yeah, that was the other thing. Do you, I mean, do you have either a picture of you on any one of your deployments um, or that looks like you're on a deployment? Or if you just have a, a regular headshot or face shot, something to go with it? I've got a deployment from um picture from a couple from Nigeria okay. um that I have from being in the field it's pretty clear I'm in the field okay. uh, and then I've got I'm actually getting a new officer portrait on uh the that Wednesday actually cuz I'm doing it in the morning so okay we're going to uh this is getting ahead of the um <clears throat> the um for the uh, publications group, Danny wants us to each submit a, a headshot for the. If you looked at the newsletter, they he loves to put pictures of, of everyone just so people can put a face with who's doing what. Um, so we'll we'll use that for that. Uh, if you've got just one of you doing a uh, or several of them on the deployment, I'd rather use I'd rather just use that for for this if that's all right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely out of uniform and have a beard on some, but that's okay. That's <laughs> It's all, send me whatever you've got, and we'll, we'll go through it there, so. Sounds good. Okay. Um, I'll tr- I can try and get that, well, it, I might be able to get it to you on Friday, but it's, I think it's going to be a uh, lot. Don't worry. Actually, okay. don't even, I will not, I promise you I will not look at it until Monday because, so don't kill okay. yourself. I've got, okay, okay. I'm going to Tampa with a buddy, um, so. Okay. Perfect, then. All right. Well, let's. And you're back in the office Monday morning. I'm sorry. You'll be back. You you'll be back Sunday. You'll be back on Monday. I get back Sunday night, but okay. Sunday okay. afternoon, but I'll be okay. available. Okay. I'll send it to you. You you'll have it uh, Monday morning when you get to the office. Great. So I, I I appreciate that. I apologize for the tight turnaround on it. And I mean, it doesn't have to be Wednesday. We can get an extension on it. I think, but. Uh, okay. That the fifteenth is what they had thrown at everyone. So, all right, thank you. <clears throat> so, all right, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your uh, day and uh, enjoy Tampa as well. And we'll touch base early next week. All right, sounds good. Okay, thank you.